All right, welcome back. All right, so today, the chosen 40 days of Jesus, devotional book two, continue. Day 39, compassion. We're also going to have a small reading. It's going to start us out in Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 36. But before we jump to this study, we're going to ask the Lord. Oh Lord, shine the hearts of loving master the pure line for divine knowledge and open the eyes of our mind that we understand your teachings in scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so that we may conquer sinful desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all things that are pleasing to you. With your Christ, our God, you are alive to you. We give glory to the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Sages and men. Oh, how love be lost meditation all day, words and light to my feet, light to my path. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, the sages. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, sinner. Lord is our shepherd. All right, so day 39, compassion. So Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to verse 36, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having shepherd the father son and the holy spirit so as we can see in verse 36 it says but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd so jesus does not condemn sinners no but what sees them as lost sheep right to be found in Brahom, right? Compassion means suffering with. The illustration of the sheep having no shepherd drawn from the Old Testament. And we'll read a few Old Testament passages. So Numbers, chapter 27, verse 17. Verse, verse 17 says from my orthodox study bible who will go in and out before their face and lead them out and bring them bring them the congregation of the lord will not be like a sheep without a shepherd three kingdoms chapter 22 Verse 17. It's also our Orthodox Study Bible. The Three Kingdoms. Chapter 22. Verse 17. Says. Micaiah said. It was not so. I saw all Israel being scattered on the mountains like a shepherd without a flock. The Lord is not with them. Let each return to his house in peace. Ezekiel 34, verse 5. Ezekiel 34, verse 5 says, So my sheep were scattered because there were no shepherds, so they became food for all the wild animals of the field. So, so Jesus, what, does not condemn sinners, but sees them as lost sheep to be found and brought home. Compassion means suffering with. 
The illustration of the sheep having no shepherd drawn from the Old Testament passages that we've read is an accusation against the Jewish leaders who charge with the duty of shepherds acted as wolves. I have a few examples I picked out where Jesus had compassion. So Matthew 14, chapter 14, verse 14 says, And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Let's keep reading. When it was evening, the disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away. They may go to the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke it and gave loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave the multitudes, so they all ate and were filled. And they took out the twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about five thousand men besides women and children. The miracle reported right there by all four evangelists shows Jesus feeding a great multitude of his people. As he fed the Israelites in the desert, as in Exodus chapter 16, the church father sees this as an image of the people as he the church father sees his image of the, of the Eucharist, an idea made clear in John chapter 6. A spiritual in interpretation was given by the Father's teaches the five loaves indicate the five books of the law, Genesis through, De through Deuteronomy, which are broken up in Christ and thus fed, thus feed the universe. The two fish represent the gospel book and the epistle book. And the teaching of the fishermen, the gathering of the, the leftovers of the apostles in verse 20 shows that the teaching the faithful are unable to grasp and nevertheless held in the conscious, consciousness of the church. Okay. Some more examples of Jesus' compassion. Matthew 20, verse 34. So Jesus had compassion. And touched their eyes, immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Here, Jesus, the two blind men confessed to Jesus as Lord. So in verse 29, it says, Now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, having saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood and called them and said, Why do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately the eyes received sight, and they and they followed him. The two blind men greet Jesus as Lord. The common title for God and the Son of David. A title deeply associated with the Messiah. Even though Jesus knows what they want before, so Jesus always knows what we want before we ask. He calls us to ask freely so we might learn of his mercy. The Father is also given a spiritual inter interpretation of this miracle with the blind men symbolizing future generations who would come to faith only by hearing without the belief of seeing. Christ in person, those who tried to silence the blind men are persecutors and tyrants, who in every generation tried to silence the church. Nevertheless, under persecution, the church all the more confesses Jesus Christ. My last example of Jesus' compassion. John chapter 11, verses 34 through 38. And he said to them, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man 
who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. In verse 35, Jesus wept. The Jew says, See. And in verse 36, then the Jew said, See how he loved him. Here, John is emphasizing that Jesus wept, groaned in the spirit. In verse 38, then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb. It was a cave and the stone laid against it. To show that he, Christ Jesus, had fully taken on human nature and was subject to grief as any man would be, weeping in the natural response to the tragedy of death. That's compassion. So Jesus taught those who suffer. That's why he came to. That's what he came to do. Bless the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. For they will be comforted. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 4, and verse 10, the NIV version. Jesus touched those who suffered. That's what he came to do. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're, if you're willing to make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I'm willing and said, be clean. Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 through 3, NIV version. Jesus suffered. For those who suffer, that's what he came to do. He was despised and rejected by mankind. Man of suffering, familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Isaiah chapter 15. 53 verses 3 through 4 the NIV version Jesus invited those who suffer that's what he came to do come to me all who who all you who labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 29 Jesus led those who suffer that's what he came to do the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves aside still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalms 23, verses 1 through 3. Jesus has, has compassion for those who suffer. That's what he continues to do. Before Jesus hung on the cross, before he touched the sick and diseased, before he taught in synagogues or preached his first message, Jesus expressed his deep compassion for man by becoming one. He was the incarnate expression of his father's tender heart toward his sheep. Without him, we are as harassed and helpless as crowds Jesus walked through. He knows our needs. He sees our suffering. He understands our pain. It is by his wounds we are healed, and through his spirit we are taught, touched, invited, and led. That is compassion. That is perfect love. It's a beautiful, beautiful read. Beautiful lesson altogether in even the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the prayer focused out the devotional sins. Thank the Lord for his limitless compassion and perfect love. Ask him to reveal more of his truth and character in times of suffering. Praise him for being your leader. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So moving forward, questions. So question number one says, how has Jesus taught, touched, invited, and led you in your suffering? Well, each and every day he, he leads me. He gives me the strength to keep doing these readings, these studies. He continues to give me the strength to continue my own personal studies as well, my own, per, my own personal prayers. I pray... That's what I pray for every day. It's just for him to continue to give me the energy, the strength, to keep myself on the right path. I pray for humility, compassion, mercy. I pray to be better at all those things. 
but he keeps leading me through my sufferings because that's what he does. And that's what he has promised to do, and he does do that. Once we let him in, and we truly develop that relationship, that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And there's steps in that relationship. You know, it starts with prayer. Open, active communication with God. Right? Then, then there's fasting, right? Fasting, you know, fasting just isn't abstaining from meat, right? I mean... I've explained fasting so many times. Fasting can be in small stages. It can be something less screen time or less internet time or whatever it is. I mean, they're, they're, they're abstaining from something in your life that it that causes temptations. Does that make sense? Okay. And that helps during our sufferings as well. Then there's alms giving, right? Giving out humility, right? Jesus will always lead us through our afflictions if we continue to lean on him. That's the thing. It's that we have to lean on him and continue down the steps that we talk about each and every day. Right? Prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Right? Your studies, your personal studies. Right? It's just whatever you do to develop that relationship, however it may be. Right? Even maybe through music. Certain gospel music, Christian music, right? You know, whatever it is, how you can build that relationship, no matter how it is, you can build it. You can build it through music and through studies. It's, it's how, you just got to find that connection with the Father, everyone. We all can find that connection, right? You just have to find that what works with you and the Father in heaven, right? Mine was through studying, right? Prayer and reading, right? So question number two says, which of these verses most resonates with you? And why write it on a piece of paper and tape it where you'll see it each day? Well, well I read Psalms 23 pretty much every day as part of prayer. What stands out to me, the most is Isaiah 53, verses 3 and 4. Because they dare prophesize how he would be despised and rejected, talking about Christ, by mankind. A man of suffering, familiar with pain. Like a one whom people hide their faces. He was despised, he was held in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our sufferings, yet he was considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Isaiah 53. Verses 3 through 4. All right, that's the one that sticks out to me. And why does it stick out to me? It sticks out to me because he bore so much pain. He put it on all of him to redeem all of us, all of mankind. I mean, none of us truly deserve salvation, do we? But that's what it is. It's a gift. All his suffering came about a gift through his grace. That is true love. That is perfect love, perfect compassion, right? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. He took on so much for us. Last question is, in what ways has Jesus in what ways has Jesus' compassion been most evident in your life or in the lives of those around you? Reading Jesus' compassion every day is what gives me hope. And it, when I read his love, his compassion, it it shows how it's all true because if there's evil right then there has to be good to combat evil right because that's the thing is that where there's darkness there's light right where there's light there's also darkness but light always comprehends 
the dark. The dark can't comprehend the light, right? So when I look at a world full of evil, and I read all this love and compassion Jesus had, that's my hope. That's my hope that I know that he's coming back, right? He's coming back to fix all of this, right? Because there's no way that evil can win, right? Jesus is coming back. He's the cure, and he's been the cure, right? And that's how we're going to end tonight. We all have to work on compassion and try to be more compassionate like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a hard, hard road to walk. It's a hard path to walk sometimes. I know it's a struggle, believe me. I struggle every day. Without further ado, let's get out of here. In the, name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There won't be much of a write-up. Right? It may be more of a video. Apologize, a little, I'm a little tired, but I had just enough energy to shoot this video, so. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, God has spoken us your divine saving words, illuminate soul sinners, comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply to hear spiritual words, but do as a good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Have to blame his life and conduct without reproach in Christ our Lord. And to you we give glory, the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. This age is amen. For this great man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God again again. My mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Lord Jesus Christ, under God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, under God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, under God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace, in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, in the sages. Amen. Jerry Wesley Campbell. Good evening, good day, good afternoon, good morning, whenever and however this message finds you. Right? Stay the path, stay the course. Right? Peace be with you all. Lay your treasures in heaven, seek him. Then deny yourself, pick up your cross, and let's get busy, right? That's all I have. JPC Spiritual Talk. Never hold back. I love you all. I'm out.